Hey guys, it's Sarah. I'm back with part two. I actually needed to take a little break in between to uh, eat my, my breakfast, but I'm back. Um, you'll notice I'm not at home. I'm in a hotel room. I run my own business and I usually take a couple days every year and do uh, what I like to call a corporate retreat. Um, just taking time away from my husband, my kids, emails, phone calls, all of that so that I can do business planning and goal setting for the upcoming year. So that's what I'm doing in the next couple of days, but I still wanted to uh, get these videos in for you. So this one is going to be about uh, my eating plan. So what I eat, what I don't eat, how I eat on a daily basis, what I track, um, what my surgeon's plan is, um, how I follow that plan, so the modifications that I've made. Um, I do get um, some comments and uh, quite a few inboxes asking about various, uh, you know, things, what I'm eating and how my plan works and all of that. Um, I'm not sharing it because I think everyone should follow this plan. I'm just sharing it because I think the more that you know um, about what other people are doing, the easier it is for you to determine what the best plan is going to be for you. Uh, I do have a lot of people who ask, um, and especially people that are not in the community, so family and friends. How do you survive on 600 calories a day? And I said this in my last video, but I survive on 600 calories a day because I have lots of fat to burn. And um, so I'm not really concerned with starving myself, quote unquote. I know that I'm getting um, enough protein, enough water, enough vitamins for my, for my body to function. And I need it to basically have the minimum amount so that I can burn as much fat as possible. Um, and so that's kind of the basis of, of my plan is, and as strange as it sounds, it's basically taking in as little as possible to not do harm, but to make sure that I'm maximizing my weight loss. My surgeon's plan is, um, six to 800 calories a day. I do probably... 500 to 700 on this sort of low and really high days, but I would say the majority of days I'm at 550 to 650. I do very low carb. Um, again, most days I'm at between 20 and 25, um, but the range would be somewhere probably between 15 and 35 um, if we took into account every day. Um, I do definitely track protein and water intake, so I try to get 70 to 90 grams of protein a day. I try to get in 80 to 100 ounces of liquids a day. Um, most days I definitely get there. Some days I go over, which is great. Um, I will be upping my protein, which also means upping my calories a little bit when I start working out, which will be um, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, fat, I track, so I track everything. Um, but I don't pay attention to fat. Uh, I think that a low-fat diet is um, unhealthy, to be honest. From the research that I've done recently, you'll find that low-fat diets, there wasn't really a good medical reason um, or, I guess, scientific reason for people to start suggesting low-fat diets. It was sort of like a fad that, sort of, that caught on. Um, I do believe that you need to have good fats in your diet, so I'm not talking about trans fat and saturated fat and all that. I'm talking about good fat from healthy whole sources, fish, nuts, avocado, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I will be incorporating more of that into my diet as time goes on as well. Um, part of the reason that I don't track fat is that it sort of take care, takes care of itself if you're doing the other things you need to be doing. Um, because fat actually has more calories per gram, so a gram of fat has nine calories, whereas carbs and protein have four. Um, because fat is so high in calories, as long as I'm sticking to the number of calories I need to be eating and I'm coming in under my goal, the fat kind of takes care of itself. So I would say most days I'm probably between 20 and 25 grams of fat, um, sometimes less, um, every once in a while a little more, but um, that's the average day, and that is obviously still fairly low fat, um, but I don't really pay attention to it. I do definitely track everything that goes in my mouth. The only exception is uh, zero calorie beverages. Everything else I track. I weigh and measure everything. Um, I think it's really important to know that you are tracking correctly. Um, I don't know about you, I am not the world's greatest estimator about how much I'm eating, so I need to make sure that I weigh and measure. The other thing is that I really can only eat uh, dense protein like two ounces, maybe, on a good day. I have really good restrictions still, so I need to measure so that I don't overeat, um, because the more food on my plate, the more I tend to eat. 
so I need to make sure that I'm not giving myself more than I really need. Um, I do think that tracking, whether it's my fitness pal, whether it's uh, another app or online tool, whether it's a food journal, whatever you use, I do think food tracking is a very important part of this journey if you want to be successful. Um, I think it's important to be able to go back and see if you have a gain, whether it might be related to what you've been eating. Um, if you want to make changes, you want to experiment with your plan, you need to track so that you can make sure that you are actually hitting your goals and also that um, you can see where the changes may have happened or relate them. Um, so I know we're all not like scientists and statisticians, but I do think it is really helpful to know exactly um, what you're eating. <clears throat> so tracking is a really, really important part of, uh, of my plan, for sure. I don't eat a lot of vegetables and fruit at this point, um, and by not a lot I mean hardly at all. <laughs> um, again, my surgeon's recommendation is to wait three months for raw vegetables. Um, cooked vegetables you can start eating before that. I have just avoided it only because my restriction is so great that it's difficult sometimes for me to even get in that 600 calories or to get in all my protein. I will start adding more fruit and vegetables in the next couple of weeks, um, mostly as snacks, to be honest, because I don't really have room to eat vegetables with protein. Um, again, my restriction is very good. I don't have space to eat um, any vegetables with my meals, so I'll be using vegetables more as snacks, um, which I think hopefully will work out well because it'll allow me to enjoy my vegetables um, and give me some low-calorie snack options as well. Uh, so normally I do um, breakfast uh, pretty much every day at this point. Breakfast is six ounces of Greek yogurt. I usually have three small meals um, or two meals and a snack, however you want to look at it, uh, uh, that are basically just protein-based. And then I normally have a um, either more yogurt or a um, protein shake at the end of the day. And that's pretty much how I eat. And if you follow me on my fitness pal, you'll, you'll basically see it's pretty boring <clears throat> because it's ba basically just yogurt, protein shake, and three protein sources <laughs> from somewhere. I do eat a lot of fish. I eat chicken. I don't eat a lot of red meat or pork right now. Um, it's not that it doesn't agree with me. It's just... Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, sorry, I have a lot of ums in this video. I apologize. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to say. <laughs> so I, red meat is not my favorite thing in the world. I do like it, but I can live without it. And so I choose um, sources of protein that are leaner, like uh, turkey, chicken, fish. Um, I don't think that's going to change, to be honest. I may add in a bit more beef and pork, but mostly stick to you poultry and fish, which are my favorites anyway. What haven't I talked about? Carbonated beverages. I don't have them. Um, they are not on plan for me, and if I started having them, I would probably get back up to my, you know, three or four Diet Cokes a day habit, so I'm not going there. Um, caffeinated beverages I generally stay away from. I'm always never a big coffee drinker anyway. I do drink tea, but usually it's herbal. Um... Alcohol. I have had in the past couple of weeks a drink or two once a week. Um, again, for my surgeon, that's totally cool. What I'm more concerned about more than the actual alcohol itself is the calories. So if I do choose to have alcohol, I choose something that is lower in calories and carbs um, just so I can keep it in plan. Again, if I ever um, cheat, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, I make sure that it is within plan and that's something that I plan to have if that makes sense so what that means is I don't see something and say oh I need to put that in my mouth right now I plan to eat it I make a conscious decision to eat whatever it is or drink it I grab my phone I go to my fitness pal I find whatever it is I put it in I make sure that it fits into my goals for that day then I have it um, and that helps to keep me accountable. It helps keep me on track. It helps to take away the guilt um, because I think that is something that we need to sort of banish from our lives. That was before. This is now. This is the new Sarah. She does not feel guilty about what goes in her mouth because she's making an informed decision to eat or drink whatever it is. Um, and so that helps me not feel like I'm cheating. I hate that word anyway. Um, I might be making a decision that is... 
um, off of my normal plan, but as long as it fits into my daily totals, I'm cool with it. So that's kind of how I deal with that. Um, that said, that happens very rarely. I'm pretty strict, to be honest. Um, I'm very strict. <laughs> I feel like I need to be. Um, for me, being morbidly obese still, still having 170 pounds left to lose, I need to be strict. That might not be for everyone. For me, I need to do everything I can. I cannot fail. I cannot. It is not an option for me. I know people say that, and it's very motivating, but I'm being real right now. I cannot fail at this. I need to keep losing. And this is the only way that I know how to guarantee, basically, that I will keep losing, is to absolutely stick to plan 99% of the time. Um, in maintenance, it's like a whole different life. But in weight loss, I need to stick to it. I cannot afford to fall off the wagon. Um, I cannot afford to go back to carbs and all of that stuff right now. I can afford to do a bit more experimentation once I reach goal. But until I get there, I need to be strict. So feel free to keep me in check <laughs> if I make a video talking about, you know, eating carbs or doing whatever. Just be like, hey, remember when you were like, no, I'm not doing that? <laughs> um, the very last thing I wanted to say is I wanted to um, give a shout out to my girl, the Curvy Jones. She made a video this week and was just talking about how she realized how difficult this journey was and how much she had wanted it to be easy um, and how easy it is for some people or it seems for some people. And I think that we all have that point in our journey where we're like, oh my God, this isn't easy. I'm not going to just fall asleep and wake up the next morning and be like, trim and healthy. This is work. Um, I know that my videos are generally <laughs> upbeat and happy and I come on and I'm like, woo, yay, look at me go. Uh, and that's because I, I need that. And I think that's what, not that that's what people want to see, but I mean, I want to, to be real and generally most of the time I am a happy-go-lucky kind of person. Um, but I want you guys to know, especially, you know, pre-ops, this is hard. It's not easy. Anyone who says it's easy, yeah, I'll censor myself and not say what I really want to say to them. But they're ignorant, and I mean that in the truest sense of the word. They are uneducated about it, and they're also rude. Um, it's hard. Every day is hard. Um, it's an obsession. For me, I wake up in the morning thinking about it. I go to bed thinking about it. It's all... I do. Um, it's on my mind 24 hours a day. That sucks. No question about it. It sucks. I don't want to have to obsess about food, my weight, how big I am, whatever, all day long. But it is the only way that I know how to be successful in anything in life. <laughs> I'm one of those person. One of those persons? I'm one of those people. I commit. I jump in all the way. That's how I do things, and that's the way that I've been successful at anything in life, and that's the only way that I'll be successful with this. And it does have a price, and it does suck. And some days, I would like to go back to my old life just one day. Just one day. And just go to town. It's not going to happen. I won't let it happen. But it doesn't mean that this is easy. And you need to be prepared for that. If you are a pre-op, you need to understand this is hard. It's hard. And if you aren't ready for that, then you are going to have that moment where you have a rude awakening. <laughs> and I don't wish that on anyone. And, and I know that all of us post-op have had that moment where we go, oh my God, what did I do? Why did I do this? Why... Is this happening? Why is this not as easy as I thought it would be? So, do your research. Watch videos. Go online. Read message boards. Read blogs. Learn as much as you can. The more you know, the easier this journey will be for you. The more successful you will be. You will be. I absolutely believe that. Um, thank you for watching, as always. I'll be back on Friday with my 12-week update. 
And until then, remember to appreciate every step of your journey. Have a great day, guys.